other than the fact that all of these ellipses are angled towards one location mm -hmm. where in the Lauren, where the Laurentide ice sheet was, mm -hmm. what hard evidence is there that this was ejections from a, a a comet impact. Well, that's that's where we're at now. I mean, we're trying to fight for evidence for it. Um, you know, because obviously you've got the Carolina Bays. They're there. The the perfect um, <clears throat> elliptical shapes of them should be very telling. Uh, I'm actually right now uh, working, trying to get a paper published, uh, just showing that we can prove that these are ellipses. You know, we're we're using mm -hmm. the something called the least squared method. Uh, we're we're identifying and, and punching, you know, putting dots all around the rims of these things, yeah. and proving that they're like time after time after time again. These things are are actually mathematical ellipses, and you don't find things like that very often in nature. Like I showed you a minute mm -hmm. ago. All of those oriented lakes, very few of those would actually have identical orientation to each other. Very, very few of them. Is there anything, anything like the uh, like like nano diamonds or any of the other materials that you find in cosmic impacts there? So we're looking um, now. They have found evidence of younger dry stuff in some of the rims of these Carolina bays. Um, like, that that is one of the possibilities is that this could have formed at the younger dryas. Um, I I don't think so anymore, and we can get into that a little bit later. Uh, but I did for a long time think that this, these were part of the Younger Dryas event. You guys have been, you've covered the Younger Dryas a few times. You oh, know? Yeah. And I, I am on board that that happened. I am on board that uh, we had major fragments, <clears throat> bolides, you know, blowing up in the atmosphere. We, find, we do find lots of evidence of that. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been a lot of back and forth with that, too. And that's kind of what makes this a little bit more difficult is because there is a connection between the Carolina Bays and the Younger Dryas. And the Younger Dryas hasn't been proven yet fully right mm -hmm. um you know most of us are like yes it, it happened right but until they it's really hard to prove yeah, right? yeah yeah and the same thing with this if ice formed it if if ice literally was it was ejected from an initial impact yeah, site ice you know an icicle is the perfect murder weapon right you know once that ice melts what are you left with right ponds of water yeah and and that's what but there would all, but would, wouldn't there also be fragments of the rock of the comet or the meteor like wouldn't I, I, there... I if you could find it then that would be awesome. We, and, we, but that's what I'm saying. Has there is there any evidence of any of that shit we've anywhere gone, near the Carolina base? Mm -mm, we've gone Nothing. looking for it. No, no, no. I think part of the reason is because nobody's looking. Like nobody's going into the the uh, apex of these Carolina bays. With we we tried. We actually went in. I went with um, like digging right into the center. You mean? Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, and and I, I have a whole collection of, of sediment that can be sent off. Uh, we actually I, I went with um, George Howard, uh, Antonio Zamora, Michael Davis, uh, George Howard, uh, and he was a guest on your show. Yeah. Uh, he used to um, he used to own a. Um, a uh, wetlands reclamation company they would they would uh -huh. uh, they would be contracted out to to re uh form wetlands and and one of his clients had a carolina bay on his property and no they were shit. Yeah, yeah and so and, and he's big time into this kind of stuff anyway he's actually i call him the godfather of carolina bays george started he, he mentioned it on the show with you that that's what got him into it to begin with was the carolina bays mm. um and so he's always been on you know trying to trying to push the carolina bay thing along uh, and so he got permission from the owner to actually, you know, go out and dig this this Carolina Bay before they turned it back into a wetland. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went out there with backhoes and, um, you know, just dug three huge trenches. And we just went down. We got he had some of his crew um, go down with ladders and and take samples. Like every like any time we saw a striation change, he would take samples out of that. Mm -hmm. We bagged that stuff up. I took it back to my to my classroom. And um, you know, I, I created a lab. I actually got a, a in touch with um, with uh, Alan West, who's like one of the one of the top guys in the Comet Research Group. Uh, we developed a uh, extraction uh, protocol, which is they already have an extraction protocol, but we had to we had to make it high school ready, you know, because mm -hmm. I was using my, my students were were doing it. And uh, so I was working with like the the number one one of the top guys in the Comet Research Group. Uh, we developed this plan, and uh, that that would make sure that we got the same results. And uh, we started sifting, and we started getting all of those. We got tons of magnetic grains, but uh, the first sample we sent in, we had three trenches. We had one on the top, and I, I don't have a picture of this one, but mm -hmm. uh, we had one on the top, one in the middle, and then another one at the, on the bottom of the Carolina Bay. Okay. Uh, so if it was like if it was like one of these, it would be on the top, middle, and then one on the bottom. Yeah. And it was, this was a small one. It was one that, you know, we can actually get into. Small is still huge. There was a whole farm mm -hmm. there, uh, you know, that they were, he was using for growing corn or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, 
but anyway, so I, we went through the whole process of extracting magnetic grains, and we sent them off, and and nothing really stood out that it was like you know younger Jurassic related, right? Uh, and it, it's super expensive, you know. It's it's it was a couple couple grand. I don't have that kind of money to mm-hmm. to send these things in. George is the one who fronted it all to begin with, and like I said, we didn't get really promising results with our first uh, go around, so we kind of put a put a pin on it. We halted it. Uh, and so I still have like two, I still have collection, uh, a collection set for the center, the center trench mm-hmm. and the Southern trench that have, that have not been tested yet. Cause we mm-hmm. just don't have the money to do it right now. Right. Well, I mean, at least for the younger dryest, we do have some pretty solid hard evidence. Yeah. Like we have the, they've dug into the black matte layer and found mm-hmm. shit like the nano diamonds yep. and like, yep. what is it? Iridium or something they um, found there? Uh, platinum, platinum, platinum. That's what we were looking for. We were looking for, yeah. because that's kind of, that one is the smoking gun. Like if you could find yeah. platinum is a rare metal on earth mm-hmm. uh, but it's super common in in space uh, uh space rocks and um yeah they're finding that whole blood just i mean the the, the we sp- have the white sand stuff like there's so much compelling hard evidence to point to something happening mm-hmm. around the twelve thousand five hundred, whatever the younger driest right hypothesis yeah, yeah twelve thousand eight hundred and something years ago yeah. yeah yep um yeah 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 and so so you know there there's a lot of evidence for that they do find that evidence in some of these Carolina Bay, Carolina bays, but they're mm-hmm. like in the rims of them. A lot of times, these are archaeologists that do this research. Um, uh, Chris Moore and I've got a I got a picture of him on here too. But Chris Moore uh, is he's one of the leading. I think he is right now like the leading common research group guy. Mm. Uh, and he's an, he's a geoarchaeologist out of us uh, as South Carolina, maybe North Carolina. Okay. Um, I actually went and helped him uh, on a dig. That's that's Micah Hanks there in that picture. Uh, and we are we're actually looking for uh, Clovis and 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 post Clovis um, mm. sites and things like that. But he's found evidence of of platinum and things like that in the rims of some of these Carolina bays, uh, which is compelling, but not really for the formation. It just means that they were, those rims were there while they were being occupied, and they're finding the platinum there mm-hmm. around the same place that you would find like the Clovis people. So it sounds like the Clovis people were using these, and they were. And that's what he was. That's what he says that they were really good. Um, waterfowl hunting locations and so they would go in there looking for ducks and whatever swans or geese or whatever and um they find they even find uh gall stones um uh, in piles where they were processing out the the waterfowl and then the stones would be left behind they used to just throw them away because they thought they were pebbles and then somebody was like wait a minute these are actually like they're from the inside of waterfowl they're from the inside of ducks or something and so oh, wow yeah yeah so they were being used by the clovis for for uh for hunting at that time um, which is kind of a, it's a kind of a strike against the Carolina Bays being a, uh, you know, being related to the Younger Dryas. Mm-hmm. And right now, like I said, what they're finding with, with the uh, Younger Dryas impact hypothesis is that there probably weren't very many direct impacts into the ground, but they were thousands of bolides blowing up in the sky. It's kind of like, you know, we mm-hmm. go through every year we go like through air bursts. Yeah. 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 Like we, we have shooting, <clears throat> shooting stars. We go through meteor showers. Right. Uh, and we can plan for those, you know, we have. Uh, right around the end of uh, October into um, into November, there's a there's a really interesting meteor shower, and it's and it's related to this because they think that that's the one that caused the Younger Dryas. Uh, but we go through it twice. It's the um, torrid meteor. Yeah, stream. the torrid meteor stream. So we go through it at the end of June, and then we go through it at the end of October. Right. Um, and they think it was actually the June passing that there was just a just instead of it being like like flakes of sand that were burning up in the atmosphere. There were chunks of stuff just blowing up in the atmosphere. We just right. went through a really thick patch. Didn't this last for like a thousand years? Well, the the younger driest lasted for a thousand years. Yeah, like it, it like twelve hundred years. When I first started, when I first was introduced to the idea, I thought like, okay, it was like a one time event. Mm-hmm. But now it seems like no, maybe it was mm-hmm. like yeah. kind of like what we went through in Florida this past summer, where we got yeah. smashed by two hurricanes in a row. <laughs> maybe that happened for a thousand years. Yeah, yeah. Well, like every every summer, we got smashed by meteors right, right, or right. comets yeah yeah and and you know that there could that could have been exactly what happened uh they're finding evidence that yeah they, this wasn't a one-time event that there were multiple air bursts um I, I always forget the name of this place but they're finding uh, in the middle east um it's, it's either abu Huraira or tell al hamam it's it's one of the two one one was a bolide event that took place during bibl- biblical times the other one was much older like during the young driest time and I, I always get the two mixed up so maybe we can, yeah maybe uh, we can george was talking about one um and that was the one that took place during like the biblical i think times. it was the tell al hamam right the was one that, where was that uh, the one in the jordan valley the sodom and gomorrah one yeah yeah yeah. so that was a little bit more recent than the young driest event but there is right. there was another very similar event that took place in that area right um 
you know, 12,800 years ago and where literally <clears throat> they, they find melt glass like surrounding, you know, villages and, right. and like people blasted up against walls and right. I mean, it's, it's pretty insane. Yeah.